combustion and flame introduction we see so many changes taking place around us we see the paper burning the sugar charring food being cooked burning of coal etc the chemical process of burning is called combustion in other words we can say that the chemical aspect of the process of burning is said to be combustion combustion is an oxidation process combustion cannot take place without oxygen an oxidation reaction in which energy is given out is called combustion the difference between combustion and burning is that no flame is seen in case of combustion while in burning a distinct flame is visible a substance that shows combustion is said to be combustible it is also referred to as a fuel necessary conditions for combustion there are three conditions necessary for combustion they are the presence of fuel oxygen and heat to burn the fuel a fuel is a substance that easily catches fire and produces heat oxygen is the gas without which anything would not burn heat is necessary to raise the temperature of a substance to its ignition temperature ignition temperature is the lowest temperature at which a substance catches fire matchstick starts burning when it is rubbed on the sides of the matchbox as on rubbing the matchstick friction is produced this raises its temperature to the ignition temperature there are some substances which have a very low ignition temperature and catch fire easily with a flame such substances are said to be inflammable substances some inflammable substances are lpg alcohol petrol etc to show that air is a supporter of combustion light a candle and cover it with glass tumbler you will find that the candle stops burning after a while this activity shows that air is necessary for combustion controlling fire at times fire caught in a fuel can be dangerous fire spreads fast as the atmosphere everywhere has oxygen which helps in spreading fire it is at times out of control thus we need to be aware of the ways in which we can control fire spraying water over the affected area reduces the temperature below its ignition temperature this gradually stops a thing from burning thereby controlling the fire due to heat water changes into water vapor which surrounds the affected portion and cuts down the supply of oxygen fire can also be controlled by removing any of the three conditions necessary for fire visibly fuel air and heat fire extinguishers a device used to extinguish fire is called fire extinguisher you must have seen the red cylinders of fire extinguishers in cinema halls banks and other public buildings a fire may be extinguished by removing all the combustible substances by cutting off the supply of air by cooling the burning substances below their ignition temperature since it is not possible to remove all combustible substances from the place of fire so the previously explained principles are followed to control the fire cooling the fire below the ignition temperature cutting off the supply of air various types of fire extinguishers are used for different types of fire water as a fire extinguisher you must have seen fire brigade people spraying water to extinguish fire at public places when water is thrown on the fire it cools the combustible substance below its ignition temperature and the fire is extinguished but it should not be used in putting off fire in electrical wiring as ordinary water conducts electricity and may result in the electrocution of the person involved soda acid fire extinguisher the soda acid fire extinguisher is based on the principle of extinguishing fire by cooling the burning substances below its ignition temperature and by cutting off the supply of air 
a soda acid fire extinguisher consists of a metallic cylinder having a knob and a nozzle tube the cylinder is filled with a saturated solution of sodium bicarbonate a glass bottle containing concentrated sulfuric acid is kept inside the metal cylinder as shown in the figure when we strike the knob of the extinguisher it forces the water solution out through the nozzle the mixture of the liquid and carbon dioxide extinguishes the fire other fire extinguishers that can be used are foam type and carbon tetrachloride fire extinguishers types of combustion combustion may either be complete incomplete rapid spontaneous or explosive complete combustion occurs in an unlimited supply of air oxygen in particular for example burning candle incomplete combustion takes place when the air is in limited supply for example burning of paper it leaves ash as a by product when a substance burns rapidly and produces heat and light it is said to be rapid combustion when combustion requires no external energy for combustion to start it is called spontaneous combustion when combustion happens when the reaction occurs very rapidly with evolution of heat light and sound it is called explosive combustion for example blowing up of dynamite flame the region of burning gas is known as flame some substances burn with a flame while some do not a substance is said to burn with a flame only when it vaporizes flame can be produced in the presence of a combustible substance and a supporter of flame all substances are first converted into vapor only then they produce flame in case of a burning candle the wax first melts and changes into vapor it is the vapor that burns as a flame parts of a flame if you observe a burning candle you will observe that the flame is not the same throughout it has various regions the color of the flame is blue at the base close to the wick there is a region around the wick which is called dark zone there is a luminous region around the dark zone it is yellow in color then there is another region that is non luminous this region is hardly visible now we shall discuss the various regions in detail the candle in fact has three zones innermost or dark zone this is the least hot part of candle flame it appears black due to the presence of unburnt wax vapor middle zone this is the major part of the flame with moderate temperature the unburnt wax gives out carbon particles which burn to give yellow light and makes this region yellow and luminous outer zone this is the zone where complete combustion takes place this makes this region the hottest one the color of this zone is blue fuel fuel refers to anything that gives out heat energy on burning it produces heat at a moderate rate in a reasonable quantity some commonly used fuels are coal cow dung cake petrol kerosene lpg cng etc the process of burning produces heat which is referred to as exothermic heat and is used for various purposes characteristics of a good fuel there is a wide variety of fuels available in the market the characteristics of a good fuel are listed below it should have a high calorific value a good fuel does not give out any poisonous chemicals combustion products or environmental pollutants the end products of the fuel on burning should not be a problem to dispose the fuel should not be too costly the fuel should be readily available the fuel should be easy to use and transport calorific value of fuels calorific value of a fuel refers to the amount of heat liberated in joules when 1 gram of a particular fuel is burnt completely products of burnt fuel some fuels release unburnt carbon into the air 
this unburnt carbon can cause a number of respiratory diseases some examples of such fuels are wood coal and petroleum in case the fuel is not completely burnt it releases carbon monoxide which is a highly harmful gas inhaling this gas could be fatal most fuels burn to release carbon dioxide into the air the increase in the concentration of carbon dioxide in the air adds to global warming fuels like coal and diesel release a suffocating gas called sulfur dioxide into the air this gas is corrosive in nature oxides of nitrogen are also released into the air by petrol engines these then result into acid rain acid rain is highly harmful to crops buildings and soil nowadays cng is used in place of petrol and diesel it is said to cause comparatively very less pollution